this CGX mount that has only just been released. This is one of the first in the country, which is great. Uh, it's my new mount. I'm really excited to get going with it. I did the unboxing yesterday. Setup's pretty straightforward. Basically, you have to put on the tripod, get it level, and accessory tray, not much to say about that. New tripod legs have the um, indents, but I haven't really um, toyed with any of that yet. You will have to install the uh, hazardous adjustment screws and get it uh, sitting flush on the tripod. Screw in these little knobs around the edge here. They've actually designed this um, shaft quite well so that if it, if, it, if it isn't screwed in, it's of an angle where it won't actually slip off even if you've got load on it, which is um, good to know. But um, still, you do want to have those screwed in. The counterweight bar should be over the um, tripod leg and you'll find that the screw holes match up for that. It can go around the other way as well, um, but they actually do want the counterweight bar on, on this side over the over the leg there. Uh, so once you've got that all set up, uh, you will be able to make your azimuth and altitude adjustments. Now the um, if you ha are in a high altitude area, you may need to adjust this main um, this main part of the construction because if you are too low or too high towards or away from the equator things may crash so they've given you some holes here so you can actually adjust this forwards or backwards for those um, people with uh, particular latitudes. Um, the attitude adjustment is actually really fantastic. The thread that they've put in here uh, is really easy to move and because of the leverage that they've designed in the shaft through the middle here, it amplifies the force and you can go forwards and backwards with the one with the one turn of the thread. Um, and it's just really quite smooth. That's gonna make a lot of difference. It's hard to uh, to move the attitude adjustment up on a lot of mounts because gravity is just pushing down. Um, so that's a really nice feature. The um, the azimuth adjustments, I found that when I unboxed mine, these were all really tight. So this wasn't doing anything. So I had to actually loosen these off uh, before this would work. Now, there is a Allen key hidden under the handle. And I didn't realize this until I read the manual. And you can use that to loosen that off. And presumably, you can use that to tighten it on when you have polar aligned, done your drift alignment, tweaked it in really nicely, uh, tighten these off so that uh, it doesn't slip, which is a great idea. Your PC port, which should be for the plane wave software when it launches in February. Uh, that's a USB connection. Uh, you do have the auxiliary connectors. One, you can use either one for the hand control. They don't give you a power supply. Unfortunately, they give you one of those crappy cigarette lighter DC cable, so you know you can't actually use it out of the box unless you go and buy an aftermarket power supply. I've got a Celestron one here, but it's only two amps instead of four, so I can't use it in the real world. So I've had to buy one off eBay, uh, which is fine. They're not too expensive, but it just always makes me wonder why you would sell such an amazing piece of equipment and not uh, not put in a cheap power supply just to make it work. The, um, the build construction is great. There's heaps of uh, metal. There's a little bit of plastic casing around the motors, but it's by far in the minority compared to the handle and the, the tripod and the actual body of the thing. So all of this is really solid, which is great. It's not uh, cheap and plasticky like a few of the last cheaper celestial mounts have been. You've got these little windows so you can see the gears and the belts slew. And if you want to, uh, you can actually take it off. Just four screws and you can watch the thing moving around, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so I can probably turn it on actually and show you. I should also mention that the handles and knobs in this Allen key thing seems like a really weird design decision. All of the knobs are big and they've got lots of grip. And then you get down to these things and you need a easily lost Allen key. Uh, it seems to me 
like um, something they could have avoided just by putting little ribs on, on here so you could move these knobs yourself. Um, so odd, odd decision there, but uh, I'm sure you'll probably just get aftermarket ones later on as they uh, arrive. Alright, so one great thing about the mount is the switch positions. It actually remembers where it is, um, even if the power is lost, and even if you take the clutches off and turn around. So I'm just going to start this one up. Now, it remembers the date and time that I set last, but it doesn't actually remember, it doesn't actually have a clock, so it hasn't incremented the time. The time that you put in here will be that which you put in last time, which is really silly. If you're going to the trouble to put memory into something, you may as well put a little battery and have an internal clock, I reckon. But, plug in your details, and you get to alignment, because I've aligned this before, you can just hop over to last alignment, and it's good to go. Tell it to head to Mercury. There it goes. I'll show you those. Well, the smooth noise is uh, really nice, really even, really smooth. It's on the loud side, but it's, um, it's not bad. It doesn't squawk, it doesn't grind. It's really nice. So that is where Mercury is right now. And here's the trick, let's just say I come along and trip over my power cable and mount's off. Now normally it would spell disaster, let's put the power back on again. And let's see what we can do. The first thing it does, press enter, set switch position. So it, it remembers where its switch position was, if I hit it, it's going to go straight back to home. Pretty cool. So let's just mess it up again. Turn it off mid slew, pull the clutch off, spin it arbitrarily, put power back on, let it initialize, set switch position, go. And despite all of that messing around, power drop out and me screwing with the uh, with the axes goes right back to where it was and further than that once it's found its switch position again there's a little pause there you can plug in the uh, incremented time details so the date that was set last time I can go back to last alignment again and I don't have to realign. Back to Mercury. And off it goes. Exactly correct. So I'm really looking forward to that. Because uh, you never know when you, you'll lose power or, or just make a mistake when you uh, lose your alignment because you mess with the clutches. So, the fact that it remembers all that is fantastic. Uh, what else can I say about this mount? Um, the hand controller is pretty stock standard. You can, um, it does have a little USB port in there for running through, um, through the sort of serial software on the computer if you want to use that sort of a setup. I don't. I want to, uh, I want to use this. And go straight to something as com based or the plain wave software when it's released. So you can do you know plate sold and more advanced tracking. Uh, but overall I'm really really impressed with this mount. It's definitely the best mount I've had and it guides well and you know can, can let me take 10 or even 20 minute guided exposures, I'll be uh, really, really happy. So that's the Celestron CGX. Hope you enjoyed.